We had a garage sale and I'm going to share with you 10 tips to make sure that you have a super successful and profitable garage sale. Hey everybody, my name is Margaret. Welcome to our channel, Texas Gal Treasures. Juan and I are full-time resellers. We sell things on uh, eBay, Etsy, anywhere online, and we also do local sales on Facebook Marketplace, offer up in Craigslist, anything we can do to make sure that we can be full-time resellers and be our own bosses. So if that's something you're interested in, you're in the right place. Make sure you've hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you're notified when we put out new videos or when we go live. Yes, we had a our own garage sale. We stayed back one weekend from going out garage selling ourselves and we took the opportunity to have a big garage sale on our own. The reason we chose to do this was that we had won a storage locker and we sold quite a bit of the merchandise from that locally. There were a few things that we sold online and then we had a lot of other stuff that we decided would be great garage sale. Things like kitchen items, some uh, like medical type stuff that we were able to sell and and then we also had a lot of stuff that was kind of big and bulky that was slower moving local sale items and then just going through my inventory or things that I hadn't quite listed yet maybe items that weren't going to be huge sellers online that we decided you know what let's clear up some space and uh, have a big garage sale so I'm going to share with you what we did to make sure our garage sale was successful we did make uh, between let's see between seven to nine hundred dollars at our garage sale uh, so it was pretty successful I would say and uh, we were able to clear off a lot of space so one of the big things that you know everybody wants with a garage sale one is to make a profit and two is to not have a whole lot of stuff left over at the end that you've got to figure out what you're gonna do with so that's gonna be something we're gonna talk about as well so let's jump in to what we did to make sure that our garage sale was as successful as it possibly could be so before your garage sale, thinking about how you're going to advertise it is really important. So we did have uh, an ad that we created. We listed every single possible category that we had, you know, to bring in as many buyers as possible. And not only that, we took our um, our ad that we made up, you know, saying, you know, hey, early birds welcome, resellers welcome, having all this stuff, everything must go, you know, make us a deal. And then we took that whole ad, we put it in Google Translate, translated it to Spanish. If someone was searching in Spanish, then they could also find the items that they were searching for as well. One of the things you've really got to think about when you are hosting your garage sale is the setup. Uh, probably pretty obvious, but maybe not. I mean, we've all been to garage sales where like things were just like thrown on a tarp or just like, I personally like digging through boxes. So just like boxes dragged out into the driveway. Like I don't mind that. It's like a treasure hunt, but you know, you, there, you've been to garage sales where it looks like they just took no care in the setup at all. So we made sure that we had tables. We had to borrow some from friends. Um, we didn't have any tarps, but we were kind of wanting a tarp to lay the clothes out on that we had. Uh, but we didn't end up having that because our tarp was left at the storage. Oops. And one another thing you need to think about is making sure you've got a clear line of view uh, to everywhere in the the garage sale. So if you've got furniture, you know, maybe don't put it in the middle of everything, but maybe off to the side so that's not blocking any views of different areas of your garage sale. Have everything out that you are selling, um, if at all possible. You know, so I know sometimes people are still not ready or there's things still in the house. Um, and then make sure wherever you're going to be stationed, like where your money is, if you're if you have that, if you're wanting to have like a spot where the money stays, then um, make sure to keep all the pricier stuff around that area. So if you have jewelry or anything that's more valuable, put it where you're going to be stationed, you know, most of the time or more close to the house rather than close to the end of the driveway so that it's, you know, something that's more visible to you. So setup is huge. Uh, another thing to think about when you are having a garage sale is to have a ton of merchandise that you are selling because we've all been to those garage sales where you drive up and it's like one little card table with like a smattering of things like oh, I drove all the way over here or you know and it's just not worth it so have a lot of stuff what if you know in advance that you are having a garage sale really go through your house and downsize go through your inventory see what's slow selling um, see what you can pull out 
if you are on freebie sites, this is something else we started doing that we started going through the freebie sites, maybe like oh, probably about three weeks before the garage sale, but we'll, we're going to plan that out a little better next time and start picking things up off the freebie site that you can flip in a garage sale. Maybe it's something you're like, mm, maybe I'm not going to want to sell this online, but it would be great in a garage sale. I might be able to make 25 bucks off it at a garage sale. So go through those freebie sites, start collecting a few things from there. So you've got a lot of inventory and then um, have a uh, plan for what what you're going to do with the leftovers. So this one goes hand in hand with having a lot of a lot of items, having a large quantity, but this is like having a variety. So again, we've all been to garage sales where you drive up and it just looks like it's all baby clothes and all baby items. And you know, that's great if you're looking for baby stuff, but uh, it's a good idea to have a lot of variety. So we did, we had, you know, DVDs, games, jewelry, kitchen stuff, medical stuff, art, I mean clothes. We just had a little something for everybody. We had vintage items. We had new and box items. It was just like a whole world of everything, you know, plush, toys, games. So we, when we made the, the ad, we were able to put like a list of all of this huge variety of items that we had, you know, records and CDs. And so we had, you know, something pretty much for anybody that was looking, you know, that we would draw people to the garage sale, right? So I mean, something to think about is having that large variety. So next up is to sort things out. All right. And when I say sort things out, I know some people can get really, really type A about how they host their garage sales. We've been to those garage sales where like everything is categorized and numbered and colored and there's a system and they're like so hung up on the logistics of running it like very specifically that it's just like almost stressful. You know what I mean? So you want to have your stuff sorted at your garage sale, but just like we didn't take days or hours or whatever. It was just like kitchen stuff over there, DVDs over there, shoes over there. Like, let's just quick sort it and get them kind of, you know, and if, if something ended up on the wrong table, it wasn't the end of the world, right? So like taking the time to just kind of generally sort stuff will make it go a little more smoothly. So if someone's looking for kitchen stuff, it's kind of generally all in the same area. You could definitely, I mean, you're not running a boutique here, right? You could like spend as much time as you wanted organizing it or as little as you, as you want. So like I said, we just kind of like quick sorted it because we, we did not do a, a ton of preparation before and we just kind of like, okay, here we go. This is the furniture's going over there. Clothes are going over there. Jewelry's over here, you know, and just boom, 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 boom. Got it out as quickly as we could because, you know, time is money. All right. So the next one is another one. Like we've been to these garage sales where people are just like attached to their items. You don't really think they want to sell them. You know, maybe they've got the eBay price on it or they'll, you ask like, Hey, how much is this? You know, pan and like, Oh, you know what? I need to tell you about this pan. And they have a story for it. Like this pan came on the Mayflower with my grandmother and I need, you know, $250,000 for it. You know, just like, as soon as they say, I need to tell you about this or, you know what, you know where this came from? And they have a whole story like, oh gosh, forget it. You know, which I think is, you know, it's cool and sweet, but it's like when you're out garage sailing, you don't want to like have to contend with something people are not ready to sell, you know? So be realistic. Don't be attached to anything. You're trying to sell this stuff. You know, you're not going to get top dollar. You're not going to get you know, what you could sell it for online. And so definitely be realistic about, um, about selling your items. You know, don't, don't get attached to anything. If you're attached to it, then it probably shouldn't be sitting out in your driveway in a garage sale. Be ready for early birds and be ready for resellers. Um, this kind of goes into the whole, like, just have fun with it and chill, um, which I don't know if I've got to yet, but I will. But, you know, we've been to these garage sales where people are really kind of high strung about it. And like it really, they make up all these rules in their head basically about how their garage sale has to run. And that's fine. It's their house, their garage sale, their whatever. But it's like, are you trying to sell your stuff or not? So just keep that in mind, like chill, you know, be ready. People are going to come early. They're not going to pay attention to the sign, what time you put on there, you know, whatever, you know, just be like, Hey, we're not ready. Just doesn't have to get 
upset, you don't have to get upset about it. Um, and then be ready for resellers. I know some people get frustrated with resellers, but um, I was encouraging it. I, I know people are trying to make a buck and I'm like, hey, come on, get your stuff. I would, I just want to get rid of it and make a little money. So uh, be ready for that, early birds and resellers. And again, chill. You know, don't get flustered. You know, <clears throat> there's going to be moments where you get slammed in your garage. So there's going to be a lot of people that show up, which is what you want. You want people to come and buy. So try to just take a step back. Nothing is like urgent. Don't let, you know, I know sometimes people come to garage sales and they're like in a hurry and they're urgent and they're like, I want to pay and get out of here because they want to go to the next garage sale. But just keep in mind, like, it's your show. It's your garage sale. It's your, it's your deal. And if somebody's getting flustered and they're, they're not getting to pay quick enough or blah, 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 you're talking to somebody else, don't let somebody else's frustration or flusteredness get to you. Just, just keep your cool, um, you know, and don't take things personally. You know, sometimes people are going to try to get a better deal and they might like talk your item down, you know, beat up your item and like, oh, this has got that and this has got this. And, you know, if you're like, sorry, I'm not getting it to you for a quarter, then, you know, just stick with it, you know, um, they're going to want to deal. You want to get rid of it and make money, but just, you know, stick to your guns, keep your cool. No big deal. I mean, I had people at the garage sale, see if I can find the, the audio of it, but I had people at the garage sale, like fuss at me for letting early birds come. Cause I had some people that saw the ad and they were like, they were wanting the record albums that I had. And I was like, Oh yeah, well people, I already had people come. Well, what time? Well, what time? This was like at 9 a.m. This guy's like, well, what time did they come? I, I don't know. It was like 6.37. Oh, they were early birding you? I was like, yeah, it says in the ads or early birds are welcome. Well, you shouldn't do that. You should not do that. I'm like, dude, <laughs> it's my garage sale. I'm going to do whatever I want. So don't let, you know, other people's attitude or whatever, like affect your ability to enjoy, you know, having your fun garage sale, making some money. Another tip we've got is that we really encouraged bundling. So uh, some people love it. Some people hate it. But we did not like pre-price our items because, and I know it drives some people crazy, but I'm like, I want to sell this stuff. I don't want someone to look at the price and be like, mm, I can't afford that and not bother ask. I know some people say, well, I won't even ask if there's no prices. I just turn around and I leave. I'm like, okay, great. You're missing out some good sales because we were trying to sell everything. We did not want to have anything dragged back in the house. So I was really encouraging bundles because I really wanted to get a lot of this stuff out. We put in our ad, resellers welcome. Um, we put early birds welcome and we put resellers welcome because we wanted to hit the ground running. We wanted to get as many buyers there as we could. I, I don't mind early birding. I don't mind people early birding. My goal is to sell, not to like have rules. So it was just like, come as early as you want. If we're out, you can start picking through stuff. If you're a reseller, you're in the right place. We're trying to get rid of stuff and we don't care if you're making a profit on it. Have a plan for what you're going to do with what's left over. Because in everybody's dream, every single morsel of every single thing is going to sell and it's going to be beautiful and you're going to sell everything. And you're going to make a million billion dollars, right? But in reality, you're going to have things that are left over that didn't get sold. You might have things that got broke during the garage sale because that sometimes happens or random things. Anyway, you're going to have leftovers. So what we did was for the last like hour, cause we, we, we blew things out. We, we started at six, six thirty, setting up and we wanted to be done before 11. Technically we really wanted to be done before 10. So we wanted to blow it out. It's hot as a mother in the summertime in Texas in August. Oh my gosh. We wanted to blow everything out and be done before 11. So that last hour what we started doing one was making better deals. And then I started kind of taking some pictures of what was left. And then I posted them on freebie sites. I'm like, okay, hey, garage sale leftovers, come over, get what you want. And we just let people come take the, take things that they wanted for the last bit of it. Cause it was like, I don't want to drag this back in the garage. If there was something I saw that I was like, you know what, maybe I'll sell this online. Maybe I ought to pick that up. And I think there was only like a handful of pieces of jewelry that I did that with though. You know, a couple pieces I brought back in like, yeah, okay, I'll sell this online. But everything else, it was just come and get it. And so the last little bit where people were coming in, maybe they hadn't seen the freebie sign yet. We were just like, you know, if they bought something, we're like, you know what, pick up a few things to go for free. You know, if they had a little kid, you know, hey, our take some little rings, take some toys, whatever, take it with you. Just go take it. 
So by the end, we had maybe two cardboard boxes left with mostly just broken stuff that just needed to be thrown away. Um, and I think Juan ended up taking it anyway to, to a dumpster and just like throwing it away. So at the end of it, we didn't have any furniture left. We had nothing big left, no artwork. Um, we had everything sold or given away and we were done. So by 11 o'clock, we were done and it was beautiful. If you guys have any more tips for garage sales, um, hosting your own garage sales, maybe you like some of my tips, maybe you don't, uh, maybe you really, really, really want to have, you know, color coded price tags on everything, you know, or I don't know, whatever your tips are, leave me another one down in the comment section. And thanks for hanging out. If you again, if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button and the bell, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.